Electrician. Hey YouTube, Dogrician84 here, and welcome to Q&A number 136. Let's kick it off. So the first question is from John Cross, who asks, "What are your thoughts on number C32 Shark Drake Vice?" Um, and Express Gaming has actually replied to this and said that one is not as good as the original number 32 Shark Drake. I'm surprised you'd think that kind, and considering Shark Drake is your favourite number. I mean, sure, it's not as easy to use as the original Shark Drake, but I actually like Shark Drake Vice. I mean, I've never played it in a deck myself, but it's a cool card um, with um, a brutal but great effect. Um, even though it's really only useful late game, I mean, sure, it does require you to have a thousand or less life points to use the effect, but it's still great when it comes to making a comeback and just taking the win. Provided, of course, you're not staring down something with targeting immunity or is unaffected by card effects. Um, it, it is amazing, actually, that um, it can just lo make a monster's attack zero just like that by banishing any monster, you know, not just water monsters or something like that. Um, I don't believe it's um, a hard once per turn. Um, oh yeah, um, check out my Nordic deck. <laughs> um, I need to remove those Gamma Seals. Uh, anyway, Shark Drake Vice. Yeah, you can do it as many times as possible. Um, so, yeah, it is until the end of the turn, of course. Um, uh, I guess, depending on the situation, just only having to use it once is all you really need. Um, but. Yeah, I still like it. I think it's a cool card. Next questions are from Matt and Alison Welch. One, you've been transported to Duel Academy Island and you enroll at Duel Academy. Who will be your first opponent? Remember, this is from the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX timeline, not Arc 5, and you're Jade and Yuki. God, that's sweet, as he'd say. Um... All oh, right, first opponent. Um, well, I guess it would be either Chaz or Bastion, you know, like in the actual GX timeline. Um, so you may be more likely Chaz. Um, as a, well, he's the first one to openly challenge Jaden anyway, and. Um, you know, Bastion prefers his prep work before dueling against someone. Um, yeah, which can create build up. Um, so, yeah, definitely Chaz, I think. Um, why not start with the rival? Uh, two, out of all the duelists from Duel Academy and GX, <clears throat> Which one do you think is the strongest, other than Jaden? And who do you think is the weakest? I would say Chumley would have to be the weakest one, in my own opinion. Um... <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I guess so. Um... It's obvious. Uh, I would agree with that, because, um... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Still not 100%. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Hoping that lemsip will help. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, yeah, out of like main characters, I would have to agree with you on there. Even though he did do better in his second duel um, throughout the series when he faced Crowler and almost had him. Um, as for the strongest, well, 
it's got to be Zane, uh, definitely. Um, um, although, I don't know whether or not to count Astor Sartorius. Um, so, I mean, to be fair, they did uh, attend in Season 2. Um, So, you know, it's actually hard to say, you know, thinking about that. Um, I mean, I would say Sartorius, but, um, yeah, Arcana Force is just so luck-based, and, uh, and I feel like, uh, the Dark Light was sort of behind, um, helping him win, maybe. I don't know for sure. Um, um, but yeah, so maybe it is a toss up between Zane and Asta. Um, Maybe I should still go with Zane, um, considering that, um, you know, besides all the, those losses after Zane's loss to Asta, uh, he's had more wins, um, who did Asta lose to? Jaden, Sartorius, Chaz, and Adrian. So that's four. Um, whereas Zane's were to Camula, Asta, and Jesse Ubell. Um, I mean, sure, there were those losses, like I said, that Zane had um, after Asta beat him, but I'd say that's just more down to bad luck than anything else. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what Zane was feeling after that loss against Asta. Um, like a wasn't himself and going for a rough patch. Um, screw. I'm. St I'm just still gonna say Zane. I'm thinking too much about all this. Our next questions are from Express Gaming, um, <clears throat> with more "Would you rather" questions. And it's a superhero and villain edition, that's meant to say. Um, one, would you rather be Wonder Man or Wonder Woman? I didn't know there was a Wonder Man. Um, but I guess I would say Wonder Man, just because I'd still be a man and I'd be able to do what Wonder Woman does. No. Just makes sense. Two, would you rather be Superman or Batman? Superman, definitely Superman, because purely because he is my favourite superhero of all time. I mean, Batman is cool and everything, and does have his perks. And sure, Superman is weak to kryptonite, magic, and space germs. Um, <clears throat> But other than that, um, I would love to be him. Just be invincible, go fast, fly. Um, flying would be beneficial since I could get around places a lot more easily and I'd never have to rely on public transport again. Um, and um, I would have the strength to carry all my stuff as well. Um, 
So yeah, if I did that I wouldn't have to worry about late bosses or uh, train bloody strikes um, or even engineering work and replacement bosses. That would be sick. Three, would you rather be the cyborg or the flash? Well, I'm not too familiar with the cyborg, um, so I guess by default I'd have to say the Flash, um, just because he can get to places really quickly, and like I said, um, that uh, running really fast would be beneficial to me as well, um, since I wouldn't have to rely on public transport. I'd imagine I'd still get tired though, depending on the distance I ran. Uh, four, would you rather be the Martian or Robin? I'm pretty sure that's meant to say Robin, and I assume by the Martian you mean Martian Manhunter. Um, hmm. That's a really tough one. Um, I mean, Robin has like well, pretty much the same skills as Batman, or at least um, as being trained. Um, yeah, and just has a lot of fighting styles. Martian Manhunter, though. I mean, he can fly as well. Has psychic abilities. Can shape shift. I'd imagine shape-shifting would be kind of fun, but other than that, I don't see any benefit from it, really. Um, I'd imagine using psychic powers would be hard and taxing. I um, don't know if I'd be able to cope with that, so by default, I'm going to say Robin. Five, would you rather be Spider-Man or Iron Man? Hmm, again, that is a tough one. Um, I mean, I would say Spider-Man instantly because he's my favourite Marvel superhero. Um, but they both have a lot of perks. Um, I mean, Spider-Man's got the spider sense, being able to walk on walls, um, and web swinging. Um, I find that web swinging would make me kind of nervous at first. Um, as, well, what if I mess it up and then just fall to my death? Then again, I probably wouldn't let that happen. I'd I'd like to think I'd shoot a web at a building just in time and stop me from falling. Um, but it would still make me nervous, uh, especially since I get nervous about being really high up on somewhere. Um, I even once went to the top of the Eiffel Tower, um, and uh, that was uh, nerve wracking. Just going up and down the lift and being at the top of there. <clears throat> but then again, being on top of the Empire State Building on the Burj Khalifa would be probably more daunting. Anyway, back on topic. Um, Iron Man, well, he has the ability to fly as well and can just and has multiple weaponry. Um, it's quite nice. Um, it's, it's a really tough one. Ow, oh, who am I kidding? I'm gonna go with Spider-Man. I feel like the spider sense would be very helpful and um, make me more aware of dangerous situations. Six, would you rather be the Incredible Hulk or Captain America? I think Captain America, um, I mean, Hulk is cool, then it would be nice to, uh, have immense strength and, you know, smash things, um, 
But having Captain America's powers would be incredible as well. Um, yeah, just again, just having multiple fighting styles and throwing the shield at enemies. I, I could do that. Seven. Would you rather be the Joker or Bane? Probably Bane, because I don't see myself being very Joker-like, even though uh, I can do a good impression of him. Um, yeah, which I did a couple of times in Try Not To Laugh challenges. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you may have heard me be like, Have you ever da danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Holly, are you ready? Okay, that wasn't very good, and it probably doesn't help that I'm not feeling well, but... Um, I like to think I did nail it in the Try Not To Laugh challenges against Gamer Central and Matt and Alison Welch. <clears throat> I'd be like, I'm the only joke around here! <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up, old chap! <laughs> Um, but no, I can't see myself really being the Joker, because, uh, well, I'm not as, cr I'm not crazy and psychotic like him, so I'd like to think I'm more like Bane than anything, so, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with Bane, and maybe the one that doesn't require Venom, like in the cartoons and stuff, but more like um, the movie version, uh, and be like, This is no time to panic, Doctor. That comes later. Uh, eight, would you rather be Catwoman or Poison Ivy? I'd say um, Catwoman, because I'm not really sure I'd want poison in my body. It's doing the things that Poison Ivy does, even though I've not really seen a lot of what she does other than um, uh, the 1997 Batman film. Um, I forgot the name of it off the top of my head. Um, it wasn't Batman Forever, because I'm pretty sure that was the third movie in that series. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be, rather be Catwoman. Um, just not have any um, just uncomfortable powers, I guess. Just, you know, just have cat burglary skills. Not that I plan to be a cat burglar or anything, but uh, but that's what I'd rather be than poison ivy. Nine. Would you rather be Two Face or the Penguin? Probably the Penguin, because I don't really want to have like half my body burnt. Um, and you know, have um, like have nothing covering my teeth on one side. Um, uh, no, I'd much rather be the penguin. I think. Um, then again, it depends on which portrayal of the penguin, though. Um, the one in the cartoon and the 1960s show, or, again, uh, the film version. Um, um, uh, the one from the 1992 film. Either way, I think I'd still rather be the penguin. <clears throat> and 10. Would you rather be the Riddler or Mr. Freeze? Um, probably the Riddler. Um, there's 
again, I don't think I could cope with being cold, like, all the time. Um, like, honestly, I don't know how Mr. Freeze handles it. Um, as, yeah, just in general, the cold just uh, makes me uncomfortable anyway. Um, sure, really hot weather does as well, but... Um, But I'm saying that just because I, I really don't like cold weather. Um, and uh, it just forces me to wrap up and uh, try and stay warm. Although that, that is nice, especially when cuddling up with Emma to keep warm. But still, other than that, um, it's just not always easy to cope. Especially if I get frozen to the bone. Um, so yeah, definitely the Riddler. And the last two questions are from Webber's Five. One. I know you're not fond of Endymion, but are you interested in the next deck profile update I do for it. I'm cooking up something really spicy with the new list. Well, if there's something really spicy, then um, but I will watch the profile. Because um, uh, I do get curious about um, how the deck uh, is like nowadays and um, what changes are done to it um, but if there's something spicy then um, you have my interest and curiosity two I did the research on D&D &D and turns out starting a campaign is a bit more difficult than we thought Requi excuse me requires a story to work from creating characters with abilities then draft scenarios based around them. Still up for try? Uh, I mean, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm sure creating characters shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but I guess... Um, everything else does. Um, maybe we need... Maybe we need to have an example of um, where to start, you know, get an idea from someone else's campaign on what to do with it. Um, that being said, I'm pretty sure there's a YouTube video tutorial about how to start a campaign, but... Um, uh, I'd still be willing to give it a go, if possible. Um, but yeah, it depends if we can get something going and whether or not we can continue doing it. Because, like I said, someday soon, like, don't know if it'll be later this year or next year, I'll be moving away and living with Emma. <clears throat> um, which also might make it difficult to actually do the big movie that the four of us had planned. Um, I'm still even not sure what to do about that, considering, like, that's still in development hell. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just feel bad if uh, that project got cancelled and I'd have to start from scratch. Yeah, because I know, like, you, Express Gaming and Emma want to get involved in that. I'm sure we can work something out, you know, with that and a D and D campaign. I don't, yeah, I was digressing, but anyway, yeah, that's it for questions in this episode. Thanks a lot for your guys' questions, very cool ones as always. And if you've got any other questions you want to ask me, post them in the comments section down below. And remember, I do these episodes every Tuesday afternoon or evening UK time. So be sure to get your questions in before then, so that you don't miss out. Thanks again, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. 
Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Dark Magician YouTube channel.